Hello there and welcome to episode 7 of my money glitch road to glory. I really hope you enjoy this video. So to start this episode off I thought we'd take a more in-depth look into the team as it stands right now. Starting with Jack Butland in goal, he's 73 rated and only 22 years old. So he's got a lot to give and his stats are alright. 76 diving, 78 reflexes being his best. But he's always been a sick young goalkeeper to get on FIFA career modes in the past so hopefully he won't let me down this time. Hector Bellerin is a player who we of course had last season. He's 71 rated and his best stats are his physical, 92 sprint speed and 89 acceleration. He's only 20 so he will probably only get quicker. He came from Arsenal as well so he's of course a baller with some pretty decent technical attributes to go with it. At left centre back we have Jamal Lascalas who we treated ourselves to for free, 73 rated and we've only had him for like 5 games and loads of his stats are already plus 1 already which is really really decent. He's not got the best of stats but he seems pretty good to play with so I'm sure he will improve in the future and especially when he's playing next to this boy Kurt Zuma who is our other centre back who we also got using the free player glitch and boy was he worth it. Obviously Zuma's always been a FIFA tank even before he moved to Chelsea but he's already ranked himself up to 76 rated at 20 years old and his stats are pretty sick with his strength being 85 which isn't bad judging he is still 20 years old. He's also worth 3.3 million which is absolutely ridiculous judging that we got him for free and he'll probably sell for a lot more than that when we eventually do sell him. And then we have another Chelsea defender but he's not quite as good as that and this is Nathan Ike. He's 68 rated so he's not the best but he was a cheap option to have at left back and someone we have faith in to grow quickly. He obviously doesn't have the greatest stats but hopefully he will improve soon and there's big things expected of him in real life so hopefully it will replicate that on this game. Nathaniel Chalaber is our central defensive midfielder and he's 72 rated. He's got a great range of attributes, a pretty decent passer which obviously we need to play in midfield and also has a good enough range of movement to shut down dangerous attacks. He's also another player in real life who's got a lot of big things expected of him. I think he was actually at Burnley at the start of the season but it didn't go too well so he's now at Reading. But yeah we were able to sign him and I'm pretty pleased with that to play in CDM for us. Serge Gnabry is our right midfielder, pacey enough to get in behind but also good enough technically to do some damage when he gets there. Something like 85 sprint speed and acceleration with some high 70s in passing. He's improved loads and loads since he joined, ranking up to level 73. John Nibe is handling things on the left for us, one of the youngest players in the team at 19, but he's 70 rated with good pace once again around the 85 mark and has pretty average stats everywhere else, but another player who has hopefully got big things ahead of them in real life, but also in this series. Jadon Zelalem has taken up the central attacking midfield position, being the lowest rated player in our starting 11, but he gets the job done. I think he's got one of the biggest potential ranges out of the lot, hopefully going up to almost 85 plus or something around that area. Even though he doesn't look it right now, trust me, this guy is a FIFA prodigy, and I would highly suggest going out and getting him while he's cheap at the start of the game. We then have Luke James up top, a player who started off with us, we then sold, and then eventually brought him back to the club again. I think for a little bit cheaper but he's 68 rated and has some pretty good physical attributes with almost all of them green which is good. Hopefully he'll grow a lot more and it will have been worth bringing him back to the mighty Peterborough United. Ricardo Zerkovic joins him up there as the final player on our starting 11. He's probably one of the players I'm most pleased to have signed as I used him before and he was something like 85 rated and that was about six years in. So if he can amount to that again, it would be absolutely awesome. His stats are pretty average right now, as he doesn't really excel in any area, but at the minute he's already starting to score goals, so I'm a satisfied customer right now. The entire team are really, really young, and most if not all should reach the 80 overall mark before they leave the club and make their way for a new talent that's coming in. It'll be interesting to see how many or indeed how long these players survive in this squad for this series. We'll most likely do a video further down the line in this series looking at that and we'll see if one or two have kept their place or when they actually left the club. Notable players who don't quite make it into our best 11 right now are Ernher Ortsthuma. He's a 63 rated cam and he was already at the club when I took over but he's 24 so we might have to sell him soon but he seems to score a lot of goals being in the right place at the right time and he plays centre attacking so if Zellalem gets injured he'll just slot in nicely. Harry Wilson is a right winger who we signed from Liverpool and is hyped up to be the next Gareth Bale as he's Welsh and can kick a ball well. He's 63 rated and only 18 so we do expect big things from this guy. He was of course the first player we brought in this series for I think 400k if I remember correctly 
which is absolutely crazy. And yeah, he is on our bench and he comes on as a sub pretty much every game and he's got quite decent pace. But yeah, he's there just in case Gnabry or Ibe get injured. And then we have Sebastian Lelegat, who is a player who should grow really, really quickly when played. So we do need to find a way to get him back into the team. He's 60 rated and he's 23 years old. I have played with this guy before in another career mode, which was four or five years in. The same time that I played with Zerkovic and he was absolutely insane. I think he was 84 rated. He was only like 28 at the time. So he was absolutely crazy. So hopefully he can replicate that. That would be absolutely awesome. But yeah, that is the team so far. They're all looking pretty good. We've got some good subs in there as well. And when we do eventually come to sell some of these players, they should have grown enough for them to be worth at least over 10 million each. So fingers crossed we can earn some money doing that. And to test them, we now have Derby County in the league. We're on the same amount of points, seven. So this should be a close game. Let's do this. We start off well, picking the ball up, chipping it through to Zivkovic, who controls well, but his finish is wide of the mark. Derby are then on the attack with Dawkins, who takes Icon in the penalty area, and we're lucky not to give away a pen after he slides. He cuts in and shoots, but Butler stays strong and is able to save. We once again attack with another ball over the top, and this time it's Delicious, falling to Zivkovic, who volleys, but it's straight at the keeper who can get the ball away. We decide to change tactics and slowly begin to build up play from the back, pretending to be Barcelona with a continuous supply of short passes, when apparently Luke James, who is now our Messi figure, picks it up, faking past the defence and smashing one home into the back of the net, making it 1-0, well done Lionel. Derby almost reply at the beginning of the second half using the overpowered chip through ball to set Bryson through, but he hit the inside of the post, unlucky mate. We ramp up the pressure with a high paced attack, bursting down the wing with a low cross into Zivkovic, whose shot is way off the mark. I, I seriously promise he is actually good, it's, it's, it's just the pressure. He usually, he usually scores those. We eventually shoot ourselves in the foot trying to pass out from the back, losing the ball and then being humiliated by Derby as, as they play keep ball in our penalty area before putting one home, 1-1, one, one, for God's sake. We somehow managed to get a penalty in the dying moments of the game. This was our time to take victory and the three points home, dampen Derby's aspirations, hopes and dreams until Zivkovic, who again, I do promise is, is actually good, does this. I mean, what on earth is he doing? 90th minute and he whacks out his best David Beckham impression. England against Turkey from the spot. Oh dear! Turkey have got plenty to say about it. But to rub it in a little bit more, Derby decide a point is enough, taking it upon themselves to keep the ball in the corner for the remainder of the game. I mean, it's one freaking one. What are you doing, EA? And then, yeah, that's it. 1-1. One, one. A home to Derby because apparently I can't take penalties anymore. Absolutely fantastic. And then after drawing to Nottingham Forest 1-1 one, one, away from home, that puts us... Fifth in the league with five games played, we're on nine points, which sets us up very nicely for the next episode, which is going to be this European tie against Real Sociedad. That is obviously going to be a very, very difficult game. I'll probably show you the full game of that, so that will be the next episode. Money Glitch Episode 8. And if you want to watch that, you can do that by either following the link in the description or clicking on the annotation inside the monitor on your screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up comment anything you want below and don't forget to hit that little red subscribe button to stay tuned for more videos from my channel thanks again for watching and i will catch you at the next one